Hi everybody, today we're going to be reading Tim slash Masky X Listener and we is in chapter 8. No title. <laughs> um, the forest was quiet as the awkward group of three slowly walked along the old trails. None of them really knew where they were going following a sort of feeling. Wyan trusted Jay in leading her to some kind of evidence thinking that starting a, a, a probably bad conversation would stop him from doing so. Tim just kind of followed, looking towards the ground, watching the dead leaves crumble under his step. Dead, fu dead fall leaves were already on the forest floor. Kicking a few rocks, one accidentally hit Wyan's leg, making her turn around in surprise, stopping abruptly. He smiled apologetically, shrugging slightly. Wyan immediately knew what was going on, smiling back, forgiving him for his minor action. Tim caught up to her, now standing right beside her. Wyan also started to walk next to him, enjoying his quiet company. They were still walking in some unknown direction, slowly starting to worry Wyan. Jay was a bit further ahead, way further ahead, to the point where trees sometimes hid him from view. She was about to question their exact whereabouts before Tim suddenly spoke. Hey, did you watch those videos I told you about? He spoke quietly, nervous for some reason. Yes, I did. I watched about 40 or so. Tim's face suddenly grew dark, his eyes avoiding her gaze as she looked at him strangely. Is something wrong? It didn't look like you did anything wrong in those tapes. He didn't seem to calm down, now looking at her worryingly. You saw tape 35, didn't you? Tim coughed suddenly, surprising Wyan a bit. She desperately tried to remember a bit. Rem remember a bit, stopping quickly. Tim noticed her lack of movement, st <laughs> lack of movement, st stopping as well and slightly in front of her. Was it that one with Jay in that house? Oh, and Alex. They amassed the man to be you. That's the one, right? Wyatt looked up to a panicked Tim staring at her in disbelief. Wait, you know that? Tim asked, shocked. Yes, of course. I told you I watched the tapes. Wyan wasn't phased one bit. Something was hindering her from fully comprehending it. Why are you... Why? What do you think I... What? Do you think I believe those tapes? She giggled a bit and... <laughs> she giggled a bit, placing a hand on a shoulder. It was then in the car... It was in the car when she decided to not believe those tapes. Her drunk self might have believed it, but her sober her? Not so much. Could you blame her? Tim and Jay were claiming to be... S that claiming that some tall faceless creature was stalking them while some other psycho tried to kill them it was too hard to comprehend too hard to believe what well, i thought you wanted to help us tim didn't move seeing um, seeming almost betrayed by her words i do you got to understand me tim what you're claiming to be what, what you're claiming to be true is ridiculous I want to believe you, but I need proof. What kind of detective would I be if I believed everything without evidence? She tried to explain, almost feeling guilty for not believing him. His heartbroken expression hitting her hard. Tim, Tim tried to understand her, walking away from her before stopping once again. Looking back at the detective, not being able to stand, still constantly rubbing his face. So what will happen when you find the evidence? I don't know. Take it in, I'll guess. Start a serious investigation, maybe. <laughs> What, what will you think of me after what you saw? Tim Tim interrupted interrupted her, pacing back and forth nervously. Tim, why are you acting like this? Is there something wrong? This conversation escalated quite quickly. Wine was worried for the poor dude, slowly starting to approach the nervous man. You will think it, it was all my fault. Tim suddenly yelled, surprising Wyan, making her take, making her back away quickly. The hell happened to the calm Toby Wright she met earlier? Collapsing to the ground, Tim started to cough violently, once again scaring Wyan even more. She was so shocked she couldn't do anything. He was acting so weird, so strange. Jay was somehow gone, so she needed to do something, and fast. Running towards him, feeling a slight deja vu remembering yesterday's incident, she knew he needed his pills. He needed them last time. The only problem was that they were located in the forest, a forest without a handy basket of life-saving pills. He could have some in his jacket? Tim never stopped coughing as she forcefully flipped him over so she could see all of his jacket pockets, tapping him down like she did a thousand, thousand, a thousand times of, on drunk civ civilians, hoping to find some sort of bottle. She found a packet of cigarettes 
and some random trash, but no bottles. Giving up, not giving up, she tried the other pocket, almost laughing with joy when she found the bottle. Remembering the child safety mechanism, she opened the bottle in a hurry, taking out two pills. Tim seemed to notice what she was doing, accepting the, mil the pills, taking them immediately. After a while, he seemed to calm down, sitting on the dirt trail, wiping the some drool off his chapped lips with his sleeves. So you should wipe. You know what you should wipe? Some freaking coconut oil or some type of lipstick. Some type of lip oil for those chapped lips, man. Mm -mm. His, his already musty hair was now covered in dirt and even some dead leaves. Wyan plucked the leaves out of his hair before standing up, looking down at him worryingly. Should she believe those tapes? Was it smart to believe those tapes? If those tapes were real, then Tim would have a very serious... And Tim would have had a very serious disorder. She had a feeling that sticking him in a mental institute would be a terrible idea. Tim slowly got up and Wyan helping him balance himself. Rushed leaves could be heard from behind as a panicked Jay approached them, pulling Wyan, Wyan off of Tim. Wyan was a bit offended by Jay's actions, stumbling back, trying to regain her balance. Jay, Jay checked Tim for any injuries, not trusting Wyan one bit, constantly looking over his shoulder. Wyan decided it was best just to let him and Tim be. It wasn't worth a fight, as a fight would definitely make the situation thousands times worse. Jay seemed to relax, glancing a bit glancing over to a worried but offended Wyan. Thanks for helping him. Jay stated with an apologetic tone, stepping close to her. I'm a cop. That's what I do. Wyan smiled weakly, weakly, looking over Jay's shoulder, glancing at Tim. He seemed better, running his hand out of through his hair to get rid of getting rid the getting the dirt out of it. Has Tim been doing this often? Wyan asked Jay quietly, not wanting Tim to hear hear what? Jay replied also in a hushed voice, coughing fits, mood swings, that kind of stuff. Wine explained, Jay seemed to recognize all of the symptoms. Yes, coughing definitely, but I haven't really experienced a lot of mood swings. I did notice smaller ones. Jay pointed his camera to the ground, his voice turning into a civil whisper. Even with Jay's quiet voice, Wine understood everything he had said with the same quiet voice. Did something suspicious happen recently? Not really. He still has a GoPro that I gave him. He hasn't returned it since. You know, the tunnel. Hold the fucking front door. Y'all, yeah, this is one of the key details that I literally just noticed while editing this video. And I don't want to spoil anything, but it kind of alludes to a theory I have about chapter 10. Um, you'll understand whenever you go ahead and get to that part. But keep in mind of the camera detail. The, the new information that Jay just gave her made her curious once again. Curious towards Tim. He just seems so interesting. <laughs> what, are you guys, what are you guys talking about? The familiar smell of nicotine woke Wyan out of her thoughts. Tim now stood next to them, calming yet smoking, com commonly smoking a cigarette. Wyan was happy he'd calmed down, but somehow it seemed too fast. It was totally possible for him to cover. It was totally possible for him to recover so fast, but it still creeped her out a bit. Thinking back to the tape and the masked figure, which was supposedly Tim, she remembered the behavior of said figure. He never really hurt anyone, but he did attack Jay and Alex on multiple occasions. His behavior was almost animalistic animalistic at acting swiftly and fast it didn't seem like he had any sort of real combat skill his fighting technique being uncoordinated and sloppy wine couldn't really think the tim she was talking to earlier the tim that was frightened and sad to act such a way the idea seemed crazy but at the same time totally possible she watched him blow out a cloud of smoke the <laughs> i hate those things the wind bringing it in bringing it to her direction. The cloud of smoke hit her face, which normally never bothered her, but now something seemed to happen. A high-pitched noise seemed to blast into her ears, making her cringe. Scanning her surroundings quickly, she noticed that Tim and Jay were perfectly fine. It got a bit confused. She look her, looked around again, not spotting anything. The, no, uh, the noise still slow, slowly getting louder. Jay seemed to notice her distress, placing a hand on her shoulder, steadying her. Wyan, Wyan, eyes widened in wonder as the noise stopped immediately after Jay touched her. You okay? Jay anxiously, his, 
asked cautiously, his camera close to her. Slightly annoyed by the camera, she pushed it away carefully, smiling, smiling at him reassuringly. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little strange, that's all. Jay nodded, trusting her just judgment, leaving her alone once again. A bad feeling overtook her as she looked deeper into the forest. Something wasn't right here. Ooh. Ooh. All right, everyone. We is in chapter nine. Y and J and Tim wandered around the forest aimlessly, even stumbling across the tunnel by accident. They found nothing. Not a single clue. No speck of blood and no faceless demons. The only thing that really bothered Wyan was Tim. He seemed distant, like he was thinking about something troubling, keeping a secret from the group. Jay knew a lot about Marble Hornets, explaining some stuff to her while they were following the dirt trails. Wyan was still skeptical about all of the things he was claiming to be true, but tried to keep an open mind. They did both look really affected by whatever w was happening, so either it was real or they were just really good actors. As a cop, Wyan dealt with a lot of liars. She could kind of tell which ones were the liars by appearance. In her books, Jay and Tim didn't look like, th like the typical liars. But anyone can be a rat. The sun was slowly... Was slowly was setting slowly and the group had just made it back to the parked cars the white blue police car stood out tremendously even making a loud honking noise as she unlocked it i told everything i know detective i told you everything i know detective if i were you i would stay out of it jay quickly told her before entering his silver car anyway stay safe he smiled at her entering his car completely wa completely waving tim goodbye before driving off tim just started smoking another one of his canter sticks waving his friend goodbye heading to his own vehicle do you really think this stuff is dangerous for me why not out of the blue catching tim's attention thinking about her question he turned towards her the smoke of his cigar blew over his head elegantly illuminating the dim traffic lights he slowly walked over to her throwing the his burnt cancer stick to the ground Ugh, disgusting i don't know i don't know anything Tim mumbled, some, some smoke escaping his mouth. Wine just stare, started to stare into his hoodie, hooded, tired eyes, him doing the same. It almost felt like the last time they did this. The same feeling of helplessness in his eyes. He wanted to tell her something, but the world, but tell the world something, but he felt guilty about it. She understood the feeling of helplessness and she wanted to help embrace him in a loving hug the same hug her father would give her when she felt helpless but she did nothing just a comfortable silence surrounded the two almost resembling an embrace building a relationship on creepily staring at each other what a weird way <laughs> what a weird way for to form a bond between two people but it worked quite well wine slowly started to look away and towards the open police car i should probably go I have another billing, building I have to visit before I have to bring the car back. Martin's working longer today, so I have time. Tim nodded understandably, looking over to his own car. I'm just going to head home. Digging through his back pocket, he brought out his car keys. You know what? Come over anytime you need help. My door is always open. Tim offered kindly, unlocking his car as well. Thanks for the flattering offer. I'll definitely come by. Have a good night, Tim. Wine smiled wide, widely, watching him. Watching him slowly enter his car. He smiled back as well. Good night, Wyan. After, after that, he drove off, leaving her alone in the dark parking lot. Her time was running out, so she hurriedly entered the car. She was also afraid to be alone in the dark, but she would never admit that. Quickly driving out of the parking lot, she headed in the opposite direction of home, heading a bit out of town. The drive was short and quick, not taking long until she spotted a three-story building. It was well lit and modern with a fancy new parking lot. Her parking her car in her favorite spot next to the dumpster, a bit off to the side, having a police car really makes you noticeable and she didn't want to be recognized in front of a nursing home. She didn't exit the car immediately, taking a few deep breaths, gathering her courage to enough courage to meet her dad her dad was her her father was her greatest love and she would could never be afraid of him she was just afraid of seeing him in the condition he was now oh goodness
After a few deep breaths, she was ready to head out, closing the car behind her. The air had gotten close, colder as she snuggled into her jacket, making the most out of it. Oh, good news. The sliding, the sliding doors opened immediately, letting her into the heated inside, still a bit chilly. The, disin the smell of disinfectant and medicine hit her hard, triggering some kind of anxiety. It smelled like a hospital, but it... It also had a little rose scent mixed in with it. She knew a lot of the patients there, here, and she also knew that one old lady loved the smell of roses. So she would spray rose oil everywhere. Wine was thankful for the roses as it calmed her nerves, making talking to the front counter easier. Ah, Miss Ellen, here to see your father again? The kind front lady, the front desk lady, Sam, asked looking through her big glasses of course wine replied smiling weakly at the redhead great we've been expecting you you know his room number right well of course you do just go ahead sam rambled her giddy Z sam rambled her giddy personality peeking through her strict nurse getup thanks wine walked past the front desk and into the long corridors of different rooms looking at every door carefully she finally found the she finally found room 15, knocking slightly before entering. The room was well lit, with big windows looking into the direction of another forest. A weak old man sat in front of said window, not noticing his, the arrival of his daughter. Hey, Papa, how you doing? Wine shyly said shyly, closing the door behind her gently. The man didn't move, still gazing out of the window with empty eyes. Wine carefully made her way towards the man, tapping his shoulder softly. The sudden movement could be seen from the man as he moved to look at her. His eyes stayed empty, not recognizing her as his precious child. Why do you keep on visiting me, woman? <laughs> oh, this is getting worse and worse, isn't it? His words hurt her even if she heard them a thousand times before. That's because I love you, Papa. <laughs> oh. Wine took a seat on the chair next to him, scooting closer. Do you want to hear a joke? He suddenly asked with a playful, toothy smile. Wine smiled, smiled sadly. Yeah, sure. Knock, knock. Who's there? Robin. Robin who? Robin you. Now hand over the cash. <laughs> he finished clapping. He finished clapping his hands loudly, laughing at his own joke like it was the first time he had ever heard, ever heard it. Wine laughed at her own, own father joke, even if she heard it a thousand times before. She told him that joke once after reading it in a magazine. He told her it was the funniest thing he had ever heard. Since then, he'd never really forgotten it, even even when he got Alzheimer's. It was funny he never forgot his favorite joke, but forgot about his own daughter. Wine could feel a small tear glide down her cheek as she looked into her father's empty, forgetting eyes. When he was home, he would wander off into the street, and when she finally found him, he would tell her he was looking for the bathroom. Once he started to forget her, she knew she had to put him away. Her job was getting harder, and she was prepared to sacrifice her money just to know her father was safe. Looking at him now, she knew he was safe, but he wasn't the same growing, growing more distant from their family and memories. The only thing he could remember was YMN. Your mother's name? Your, oh, your mother's name. Okay. Have you seen why in your mom's name? <laughs> Whatever. I'm just going to say uh, Patricia. Patricia. Yeah. Patricia. No. We already have Patricia. Um, have you seen Florence? Yeah. Have you seen Florence? Have you seen Florence? She's pregnant and I need to take care of her. Panicked, her father looked around searching for a woman that no longer lived. Florence was her mother. She died from a fatal car accident when she was a very young, so she never really missed her. All she knew was Florence was 30 when she gave birth to her and her father 49. The big age gap caught up to them, leaving a 79-year-old man to forget and a 26-year-old daughter to take care of him. Florence isn't here, Papa. Wine calmly stroked her father's arm, taking his wrinkled hand into her young ones. Is she coming soon? He asked, saddened by the news. Maybe, Papa. How about we put you to bed? It's really late. Ryan got up from the chair, helping her father up as well. I just had breakfast. How could it be time for bed? He asked innocently, following the unknown woman. You're already in your PJs, and look, it's dark outside. He, 
He, her father looked out of the window once again, his eyes widening in surprise. I totally forgot. He mumbled to himself, sitting on the comfortable bed. Wyan smiled to herself, sadly, more tears streaming down her cheek. Why are you crying, honey? Her father sadly asked, wiping some of her tears. Oh my god, this is... Oh. And, a sh and with a shaking thumb, almost stabbing her in the eye. I just missed you. Wyan grabbed her father's shaking hand, pulling away from her face, kissing it softly. Her father seemed confused by the action, pulling his hand away. Get your paws off me! He yelled, strictly disgusted by the apparent stranger. Understanding her father's discomfort, she let go. She let it go. She let go, backing away. I want a nurse immediately. They should kick you out, creep. I want my Florence now. Her father's words were got more hateful, making her cower, cower away. She knew what she had to do. Okay, Papa, I'll go. Wine headed towards the door, turning back, looking at her father one last time before she left. And stop calling me Papa. He, spop he spat again as Wine basically fell fled out of the room. She knew it wasn't his fault, but it still hurt immensely. The only person who ever really loved you for getting you completely. Despite the fact that it hurt seeing him like this, d there's only one thing she knew. She would never stop caring and spending all her money on him. Because she he was her Papa, and he deserved it. That is so sad, fool. That, like, that is that is really, really sad. <laughs> Shit, man. I want to know what happens. That, that, that almost made me cry, bro. Like, that was so sad. Why you had it? It's such a th sad thing, bro. It's so sad, bro. <laughs> very, very sad. Um, chapter 10. <sighs> Excuse me, chapter 10. The morning sun was shining once again as the asleep... Deprived Wyan lazy walked lazily to work. She never she never slept well after visiting her father. It always left her in a depressed mood, in kind of depressed mood. Some advised her to not visit her father when they noticed how sad she was. The thing is, she acts the same when she hasn't visited her father in a while. So it was a useless solution. It was funny. Visiting her, she loved visiting her father, but at the same time hated it. Her heavy chest and depressed thoughts didn't change her smile, though. She always smiled through the pain. It kept her sane. Ooh, that's rhymed. The fake smile on her face fought off all of the worried looks and allowed her to go about her day without major inconveniences. Finally reaching the gas station, she noticed Mal Malicia, <laughs> Malicia <laughs> standing at the, corn at the counter, as always. L L Malicia... Noticed her enter with a giving her a big genuine smile. She always seemed to smile. Welcome, detective. She happily greeted with her perfect sing songy voice, trying to brighten up her day. Wine gave her a big fake smile, not wanting to ruin her mood. Like every morning, she headed in the she headed <laughs> what almost into the back of the store where the where the sweets were located. Morning, Malicia. <laughs> she answered from behind the sweet. Isol. Her mood worsened as the smile on her face grew harder to fake. The gummy bears were missing. They were always right here. Her sweet medicine was missing. Hey, Malisha, do you guys have any gummies, bears in stock? Wine asked once more from behind the sweet Isol. Is there no more? Malisha com questioned aloud, loudly, a bit confused. No, they're all gone. Wine was getting an was getting annoyed at the other gummy bear choices. <laughs> I know looking <laughs> I'm so sorry, Wyan, but the next delivery is tomorrow, I think. Malicia sounded genuinely sorry, knowing her friend uses gummy bears to cheer herself up. It's okay, I'll just take gummy bear frogs today, I guess. <laughs> Disappointed, she grabbed the bags of green gummy frogs, heading towards the checkout counter. Malicia looked sadly at the green bag in front of her scanning the barcode. It only <laughs> It not only was it less colorful, but it costed a dollar more. <laughs> Cigarettes? <clears throat> Melisha asked, still keeping that warm smile. No, I have a pack. Wyan mumbled, handing her a five dollar bill. Taking the bill, she handed she handed back the right amount of change, handing Wyan her bag of gummies. Have a good day and don't overwork yourself. Melisha kindly said her kindly said, waving her goodbye. Wyan w smiled slightly at her comment also waving goodbye and exiting the shop. <clears throat> Today was going to be an office day. 
She really needed to look over all the video entries of the Marble Hornets. Her office had a way better Wi-Fi connection and a well-working computer, so it would definitely be faster than at home. Not only the not for now, the only thing she could really do to help Jay and Tim was to watch these vi unbelievable videos. Hopefully, hopefully make sense of whatever she was was going on and try to believe them the intoxicating smell of coffee filled her nose as she entered the police station martin himself was drinking a coffee his tired her t his tired eyes watched her lazily his messy brown hair was tied up into a small ponytail for once not getting everywhere hey wyan his chapped lips formed a small smile as he desperately tried to keep his eyes open morning martin Wyan greeted him as well, walking through the metal detectors as of into the office. Before heading towards the, her desk, she made a quick stop at the coffee machine, grabbing one of the plain white co plain white mugs, pouring a decent amount of hot black coffee into it. Black coffee was the only thing that could really wake her up in the morning. Ugh, something like my my band director. She was too poor to have for her own coffee machine, so the cheap office coffee had to do. Harold didn't arrive yet didn't, hadn't arrived yet his desk being empty. He really needed to tidy up his desk. There were candy wrappers and tissues everywhere. Usually officers had to bring witnesses to their desk to question them, and with a, with a desk like that, the witness is definitely going to question your skills. She made the experience she had she made the experience firsthand as one of the witnesses asked to be transferred to a different cop as her desk was too messy. That person must really be a cleaning freak as she only had a little dead plant on her desk. Well, if someone wanted to be such a dick, she wouldn't have worked with them anyways. Placing her mug on with steaming hot coffee on the desk, she threw her jacket onto the chair plopping down on it. Her office chair at home was way more comfortable than this cheap one, but she didn't complain. She had been sleeping on a single mattress for a long for a long time, and just a little bit of comfort soothed her. Starting up the older yet still working computer, it didn't take long until it asked her for the security password. Wine never ha Wine was never the one to forget a simple simple uh, oh my gosh simple passwords immediately getting it right. A colorful wallpaper greeted her, bringing her just a little bit of joy. She always searched for stuff that which made her happy. Her hate of the dreadful feeling knowing as sadness always made her look for the tiniest specks of light, light in life. Life always let her down, but she still refused to give up on it, knowing she can still be happy. Opening a tab on the inter opening a tab on the Internet Explorer, she searched for the famous YouTube. Not a real social media follower herself. Probably because of her lack of equipment. It surprised her how much content was on it. Still kind of on a still kind of new site. What year is this? <laughs> now I realize what year is this? I don't know when Marble Hornets is based on, but I'm guessing this is like really early. Like not like. So hi everyone. As you look at my face randomly. So basically, I looked it up and it said it was based in the area of 2006. So yeah super early but like 19 1960s 1970s i don't know but old um where we at by the way <laughs> i just oh not wow looking around to make sure nobody especially her bus was watching her slack off of course no workplace likes a lazy worker and wine tried her best not to be one harold didn't seem to care but the boss liked him the boss would probably be furious and definitely not believe anything she would say if he catched her. Nobody, nobody dangerous was in sight <laughs> as she took a deep breath looking back at her screen. It's just a case. It's just four case. It's, it's four case. She kept repeating it in her head, convincing herself she wasn't breaking any rules. Slowly, she wrote the famous title Marble Hornets into the search bar, amazed how fast it went to find it. Her stolen internet... <laughs> Would never be this fast, even if somebody else was using it. I mean, even if nobody else was using it. Smiling proudly to herself as she found the account, about to click on it before noticing something. Directly under it was a video that seemed almost related to the whole Marble Hornets thingy, but it wasn't Jay's account.
it was another person's. Another account that was maybe linked to whatever was going on. Intrigued and curious, she clicked on the short video, noticing it was just released about two hours ago. The, vi the video had about 500 views, which surprised her given it was so new. The video took a while to load, giving her time to place the tacky headphones on her head. The headphones came with the computer, so every officer and detective had one. A loud ear raping static noise woke her up, completely scaring her almost. It hurt her ear so much she had to quickly she had a, she was forced to quickly rip off the headphones. Her ears was were still ringing as she noticed the volume was set to full. No wonder she hurt her ears. Seeing a familiar face in the corner of her eyes, she looked back at the screen. The color fled from her face when she recognized the person in the in the video a woman with whatever hair sat on an old dusty couch bearing her face into their shaky hands the scene was all too familiar as the person in that on that specific video was no was without a no doubt her fear almost immediately replaced her sadness as she sat there looking at herself in shock someone was stalking her peeking through her window, catching her in her most weakest moments. Hastily, she looked at the video title, demanding to know exactly what was going on. Knowing the name of the title didn't calm her down one bit worrying her, mo worrying her, her more. New player. The title was so simple yet so unsettling. 500 of people have seen this? 500 people had seen her cry and drown herself on with weep want with weep <laughs> with cheap wine a small tear slowly escaped her eyes as the feeling of being watched never left her well, what has she done to deserve this was she supposed to suffer hey why aren't you all right the sudden feeling of someone's hand on her shoulder th drew her, threw her out of her thoughts her head snapped in surprise and fear, but calmed down when she saw the person behind her. Harold looked at her worryingly and noticed a small tear on her cheek. Wine quickly wiped it off her face, trying her hardest to smile at him. Yeah, I'm fine, just feeling a little bit under the weather. She started covering up her obvious fear. Wine, I mean, excuse me, Harold wanted to believe her, but looking right behind, but to believe her, looking behind her at the computer screen, what are you watching? He asked curiously, never once seeing her slack off before. N nothing interesting. She turned back towards the computer, sighing in relief as the video already ended. Well, okay, I'll be right here if you need me. He sat down by his messy desk, smiling kindly at Wyan, also turning on his computer. I'll keep that in mind. Wyan turned back towards her screen, taking a deep breath. She knew she had to watch that video again, no matter how hard it was. And she wasn't looking forward to it one bit. The video itself was very short and incredibly bad quality. You needed to look closely to recognize fi finer details and surroundings. There was no sound, just that terrible noise that almost hurt her poor ears. A little sentence flashed across the screen as it, at, it, as the, it ended. Almost too fast to see, but she knew what it said. Welcome, Wyan. Oh my god! Bro! Oh my, that is terrif- Oh, shit. That is terrifying. Oh my gooshness, bro. i never seen anything like that. that. Oh my, I would be beyond scared. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I would be terrified. Okay, that, um, that was very upsetting. Like, imagine you visit your dad that has Alzheimer's. Um, and he doesn't remember you at all. And, um, he thinks you're a creep. And then all of a sudden, freaking- the next day, you just find out someone is stalking you and added you as a new player. Welcome, YN. Bro, I would have literally cried. And, and the worst part is they caught you on the worst on the worst day of your life, like drinking cheap wine and just basically like depresso, depresco. I would have, I would have probably cried. <laughs> I would have been so. I'd be like, you know what? I'm done. This case never getting solved. <laughs> but um, I don't know. This is gonna get pretty interesting and pretty juicy. Um, let me know what you guys think will happen next. I personally think that um, wine is not gonna be safe for a little bit. <laughs> She's not gonna be safe. Um, also um, no 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 no. I say that um. Do you guys think that um, YN will survive this in the end, like in the full end? No cheating, no looking. But do you guys think that YN will fully survive and go through with this? Like, will she survive this fan fiction? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, do you think Tim or Jay have seen these videos? Do you think they have a part 
in making this video or just literally she shows them and wow. Uh-oh. That's no bueno. <laughs> I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Um, I honestly don't know. It's getting juicy. Um, I honestly feel bad for her. Her dad... I mean, that's just, it made me cry a little bit. That, that made me tear up a little bit because that was really sad. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos, guys. And y'all will have to wait next time and tune in to the next video of this series or other series. I No hate, no no discrimination, no hate. Um, but anyways, y'all girls gotta go. Bye and peace, everybody. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. And they would be right. Remember when I told you guys about that small detail to keep in mind? The camera? Remember when if it's mentioned that Tim has a split personality and whatnot, and his other personality, I believe, is Masky? I think that was him. Because they also mentioned about, like, the randomest detail of, like, why they had to say something about a camera that Tim is borrowing but never gave back. That's suspicious. That's suspicious. That's weird. And maybe that's why he looked like he wanted to say something but couldn't. That's why maybe he was saying that, what would you think of me after this? Well, anyways, guys, your girl's got to go. Uh, let me know what you guys think about my theory in the comments down below. Bye.